Hi, this video is an overview of Sahara service in June release OpenStack. Sahara is a data processing service that, which allows users to set up Hadoop clusters on their OpenStack cloud and then run data processing jobs on top of those clusters. Sahara uses provisioning plugins to install Hadoop onto virtual machines and then configure the Hadoop processes. So there are four plugins available in June release and two of them are new in June, which are Cloudera plugin running Hadoop with Cloudera Manager version 5 and Apache Spark, which is running the Spark jobs on top of Hadoop clusters. Now to set up a cluster and run a job execution, I have to prepare my cloud. And the first thing to do here is to set up an image with the Hadoop distribution installed there. I have already uploaded a vanilla Hadoop image to my glance, but Sahara will not be able to use it until it is marked with a specific set of tags and meta information. So to make it available for the cluster provisioning, I have to go to Sahara's image registry component and register a new image. Here's the vanilla image with the second Hadoop installed there. And what I have to tell is the username. In this case, it's Ubuntu. This username will be used by Sahara to log into the instances and configure Hadoop. And the version and plugin tags will be used to filter the images for the right plugins when they are asked for. Now when the image is ready, it's time to configure the cluster topology. Sahara uses the concept of node group and cluster templates. The node group templates are designed to configure the, a set of instances which will have the same configuration and the same properties in case of the RAM, CPUs and etc. So I'll create a node group template for the vanilla Apache Hadoop plugin of the second version, running the second version of Hadoop. The configuration is pretty simple. I have to give it a name. I'll call it a Hadoop master node. Then I'll pick a OpenStack flavor for it. The availability zone configuration will tell in which availability zone all the instances should be created in this cluster. I'll leave ephemeral drive for the storage location because I don't need any large cylinder volumes for HDFS in this cluster but I need to set up the public pool of floating IP so that Sahara can access the VMs through this public network. The support for security groups have appeared in Juno and I can set up default security group that will be used for the cluster nodes in this node group. The process for the master node are the name nodes, secondary name node, Uzi, resource manager and the history server. So the master node is ready now and I have to configure the work node also. The name will be Hadoop worker node. And I'll now actually pick the same properties as for the master node. So the availability zone default and the public network for the following and people. The process are going to be a data node and the node manager. Now these two node group templates should be combined into one cluster template. So I go to the cluster templates panel and click a create cluster template button. The same second version of vanilla Apache Hadoop here. The template name will be demo template, let's call it. And I need to specify the node groups I've just created. So one master node and a few workers. So let's say four worker nodes. I can also set up some general configuration for the cluster, like enabling the Swift support and MySQL database there. And there are also the cluster-wide configuration for the main Hadoop components like HDFS or MapReduce. So I'll leave all of those by default and just create a cluster template. 
now I can run the cluster actually and uh, the only thing I have to do here is to give it a name so let's call it a demo cluster uh, the cluster template is already selected and there is a here is the image I've just uploaded and registered in Sahara Image Registry. I can also set up a key pair so that when the instances are ready I can log in directly and see what's going on there, but I don't, I don't need this for the demo. So the cluster is starting. And it will go through a set of preparing and spawning statuses. So now it's time to configure the data processing components for running a job on this cluster. So the data processing means that there is going to be some data in first place. And for this demo, I've prepared the set of uh, OpenStack repositories that are cloned from GitHub. And now they are compressed into one tar archive that will be uploaded to the Swift container. And to save some time, I've already done that before the demo. So here is the demo container and there is an input to archive stored inside it. So now I have to tell Sahar where this input archive is located and that's where the, the data sources component is required. So I go to the data processing back and select the data sources panel. And now I have to create an input data source which will tell that I need to use a Swift container. The, the other option is IGFS by the way and the format of the URL should be the container name .sahara, and the input tar archive in this case. Now I have to create one more data source which will tell Sahara where to store the output of the data processing job. So I'll call it the output, also store it into the Swift container and Actually, I can use the same container, but uh, I have to specify another object name, so let's call it just output. These are the data sources. Now it's time to set up the job binary. The job binaries are supposed to be the executable scripts like big scripts or jar archives. I have to give a name to my new job binary, which will be a demo big I'm going to use a big script and as it is a very small text file I'll just use an internal database as a storage in case of a larger jar files for example I can use the Swift container also so I'll upload a new file and that's it. this is the function I'm going to run on the cluster so after I click a create button the script is stored in the internal database the script actually is the pretty simple function. It will be given a set of lines, which is the OpenStack repository source code stored in the tar archive. And it will filter all the lines that have a to-do substring in them. And usually when there is a to-do comment in the source code, there is also a name with a contributor that is in charge of fixing this to do comments so the script will group this line together and calculate how many times each of the contributors was mentioned in such kind of comments and then store them into the big storage with a small prefix so that there is a correct link leading to this contributor name and that's the script so now I have to create the job object which is the main data processing object telling what kind of the job is going to be executed. I'll give it a name of demo job and the job type is as I already said big script. There are a, there is a set of other data processing job types here so I'll just select big script and choose the main execution binary here. If there are any other libraries that should be specified, the second tab will allow to do that, but I don't need this for this simple big script. And here is the job, so let's check if the cluster is active now. Yep, this cluster has already started, which means it's time to start the job execution. The job execution is pretty simple to be started. I just click uh, launch an existing cluster button and specify the input and the output data sources for it. 
I can also set up some additional configurations for Java actions or other job execution types, but I don't need any for this little script. So the job execution has started and we can just sit and wait looking at this status bar updating, but we can also track the how the execution is going inside the actually actual Hadoop process like Uzi or Resource Manager Web UI. So if I open the Resource Web Manager Web UI of the cluster, I'll see that there are some job executions with the Uzi workflow creating here. And it will take some amount of time to complete the job, so I'll pause the video and resume it when the job execution is complete. Now the resource manager is telling that all the MapReduce steps of the pick script have successfully completed, and we can see the same thing displayed in the job executions panel of Sahara UI. That means that there is going to be an output uh, object in the Swift container that I specified as an output data source. So let's check it out. And here is the output pseudo folder, which has only one text file and I will download it and so here's the list of contributors mentioned in the to-do comments most frequently in the OpenStack source code files for the June release and that's actually all for this demo thanks for watching